Moving away from South Africa now, let's go to Somalia, where its president Hassan Sheikh Mohammed has appointed Hamza Abdi Bari as the country's new prime minister. The president said he had been considering the selection of a new prime minister for some time and saw Hamza Abdi Bari as a potential candidate. Speaking after his appointment, Mr. Bari said he would form a government worthy of rescuing the country with a top priority of working towards a united Somalia. Hamza Abdi Bari has held various positions in the offices of the federal government of Somalia, including chairing the Juba Land Electoral Commission from 2019 to 2020. The 48 year old MP from the semi autonomous state of Jubaland replaces Mohammed Hussein Robo, who spent 22 months in office. Now, President Mohammed, who previously served as head of state between 2012 and 2017, unveiled his choice for Prime Minister just six days after being inaugurated at a Mogadishu ceremony attended by several regional heads of states. Earlier, we spoke to New Central correspondent Abdino Aden about the appointment. The new Prime Minister, first of all, is uh, currently part of the Somali Federal Parliament uh, after he was uh, elected from the Jubilant, Jubilant Federal Member State. And uh, he is an academician career-wise. Uh, he also spent previously working with the President uh, during the earlier political times together under the uh, PDP, Peace and Development Party. Therefore, he is a politician come educationist. So going by uh, the previous uh, challenges existing between uh, the outgoing Prime Minister Mohammed Hussein Roble and the former President uh, Mohammed Abdullahi Pramajo, the public now hope there will be very close working relationship between the president and the prime minister to steer the country forward and the two of them having worked together previously uh, with photos of the two in their previous lives as, uh, as, as, as university lecturers and founders of the PDP party the people believe that they won't see uh, public uh, frictions and exchanges between the president and the prime minister and they believe if that will be achieved it will open doors for uh, the success of various sectors in the country. Oh, well, um, nicely put by Abdino. And, um, you know, we always would encourage, you know, for better governance, better leadership um, in, in these countries. Great thing that they were able to hold their elections. The inauguration okay, also stated, um, you know, took place a couple of days ago. Um, and he's setting up his cabinet. Just you know. six days after. I mean, you, it's important to have your plan set out. So as you're getting into office, you're reeling out the names of those that are working with you, set up your cabinet and get government ruling. Because we know how in some other parts of the continent, when a president is elected into office, it will take another long stretch for them to determine the members of their yeah. cabinet. A lot of politicking goes back and forth. But congratulations to the people of Somalia. We hope that this you know, works out well for them and that this government is better than the last. I mean, we hope for a better government with each time. Now, let's bring the conversation back here to Nigeria, where the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has set up a committee to screen its vice presidential candidates for the 2023 general elections. According to the party's spokesman, Debo Ologunagba, members of the vice presidential candidate screening committee were nominated by the PDP National Working Committee, NWC. And he said that the screening exercise would hold by 10 a.m. today inside the NWC hall at the PDP National Secretariat in Abuja, the nation's capital. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at this. We've been talking about this for the past few days. There have been speculations about the vice potential vice presidential candidates being uh, in Yesom Wike. And yesterday we had representatives from the PDP and the APC joining us to talk about this and how this might impact the, uh, the elections for the well, APC, the, the, the yeah. PDP, and even the Labour Party. Yeah, but you're, um, yes, and we can, the River State Governor is one of uh, those being considered. The Governor of Delta State, uh, if I recall, is oh, also yes. being considered. Um, oh, the Udom um, also. Um, Udom Emmanuel also is, be, is, is being considered also. But the, the thing is, you know, for me, I, I understand. Um, and if you also have looked at um, a statement that was made yesterday by Oju Zokalu, um, uh, who is a former Governor of Abia State, he was referring to the APC's chances. There's something particular about the things that they are saying. The the focus really for these parties is who can help win. them win the election. Exactly. Um, it's not necessarily about you know, I mean, and I'm not saying that these are poor quality um, um, aspirants or, or choices, but the focus really is who can help us win the election. Who would give us the most votes from these regions and from that region? One of the things that was said yesterday, if you remember, um, one of the guests who spoke on um, for the PDP yesterday, he said something. 
um, that caught my attention. It was saying that the PDP states in the southeast, the southeast is the PDP region, and it will, um, the, those governors will not allow their you know, their states to I be won by that. other parties. And I said, oh, wow. Is, is it really up to the governors now? I mean, do the governors simply give, you know, victory to the party? Or is it the people who decide? So it, it really just tells you the mindset of these persons. I mean, in the words of Ashwa Jubala, he says, it is now my turn. So I think that in some way, politics has become that where people think, oh, it's been, I mean, I think that's where the concept of zoning came from. Not that I endorse, personally, I do not have any opinions in this regard, but there have been people who have said politics should not just be about whose turn it is, it should be about who does the work. Absolutely. But then sometimes it's a bit difficult to distinguish who does the work from, you know, distinguish politics as it is, saying that, okay, you want it to be done based on the quality of a person's character. Politicking as it stands right now is, yes, quality of the person's character, but also there's a thing of who did what last time? Whose turn is it this now, this time? I, I mean, it's just it's just power play. Mostly because of fairness and you know justice equity. and equity and some of all of those and federal character um, and you know the way that you know Nigeria has been run for a long time because you know sadly you know when these things come to the forefront you know a lot of times they would always do whatever serves their interest the best. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes they would bend the rules, you know, to, to suit their, their, their interests. You know, in a couple of years from now, eight years from now, the conversation might be different. And they will be, you know, they will be back to saying, oh, we must respect, you know, that is the North's time or is the South's time this time. You know, but you, you, there's a lot of these things that would continue to play out Absolutely. and happen.